The following is a demonstration of ASTM International E2458-10 Standard Practices for Bulk Sample Collection and Swab Sample Collection of Visible Powders Suspected of Being Biothread Agents from Non-Porous Surfaces. These practices address collection of visible powders that are suspected biothread agents from solid non-pore surfaces by way of a bulk collection method using a dry swab and laminated card followed by a swab sampling method using a sterile moistened swab. Bulk powder samples are collected and packaged in a manner that permits the maximum amount of the sample to be safely transported to a reference laboratory within the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, National Laboratory Response Network, or LRN2, for confirmatory identification and safe storage. If the source of the powder is a letter or small package, that item is also packaged in a manner that permits it to be safely transported to an LRN reference laboratory. A sterile moistened swab may be used to collect residual powder and may be used to conduct on-site biological assessments for the purpose of testing for biothread agents. These practices are performed in coordination with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, as part of a risk assessment, including hazard assessment and threat evaluation, as recommended and clarified in ASTM E2770 Guidance Standard. The decision to implement these practices and collect a public safety sample will be made by members of the response community of the jurisdiction assuming responsibility through coordination with the FBI and the receiving LRN reference laboratory. Method A Procedure Prior to entering the hot zone, the team will examine sampling supplies for serviceability, properly label all items with a unique sample identification number, and prepare items for sampling. The team will make fresh pH-adjusted bleach. After entering the hot zone, field screening will be performed on the suspect material prior to sample collection. The team will rule out explosives, radiation, flammability, corrosives, and volatile organic compounds. Results are recorded on an appropriate form. The facilitator will document the sample site. If the source of the powder is present, for example a letter, and it can be easily fit into a one-gallon resealable plastic bag, the facilitator positions a pre-labeled primary source bag above the surface next to the sample source and holds it open. The sampler gently places the source into the plastic bag, making sure all writing and markings are visible through the bag. The facilitator seals the bag and places it into another plastic bag decontaminates the outside of the bag. And places it into a transport container, allowing a contact time of 10 minutes. The facilitator opens the sample container labeled powder sample to remove the sterile laminated card by pouring it into the cupped hands of the sampler. The lid is placed back on the sample container. The facilitator then loosens the cap of the tube containing the swab. The sampler removes the swab from the tube. The sampler holds the laminated card at an angle on the surface next to the powder. The swab should be used to gently move the powder onto the card with short pushing motions, rolling the swab over the edge of the card to avoid popping the swab and causing an aerosol hazard. The facilitator moves the tube container to the sampler. The sampler then places the swab back into the tube, taking care not to touch the outside of the tube. 
and closes the tube by pushing on the swab until it clicks securely into place. The facilitator reopens the sample container labeled powder sample and hands it to the sampler. The facilitator places the tube containing the swab into a plastic bag labeled dry swab, then decontaminates the outside of the bag and places it into a transport container, allowing a contact time of 10 minutes. The sampler holds the sample collection container on its side, parallel to the surface, and moves the container over the laminated card. The card is slightly lifted off the surface in order to provide just enough clearance for the movement of the sample container. The container is moved over the card, and the card is gently placed inside the container, avoiding spilling powder off of the card. The facilitator hands the sampler the container cap. The sampler secures the cap onto the container before it is moved or turned vertical. The sampler places the closed, pre-labeled container into a plastic bag held open by the facilitator, taking care not to touch the outside of the bag. Then the facilitator seals and decontaminates the bag. The bag is placed into a sample transport container, allowing a contact time of 10 minutes. If the pile of powder is too large for collection by one single laminated card, the previous steps are repeated with a new card, swab, and sample container. Once method A is completed, the team should proceed to method B. Method B Procedure After method A is complete, the facilitator removes the lid from the vial labeled as buffer and hands the vial to the sampler. The facilitator loosens the swab from the tube but does not remove the swab and then presents the tube to the sampler. The sampler holds the tube and buffer vial in the same hand. The sampler removes the swab from the tube and places it into the buffer vial to moisten the swab using a septic technique to prevent cross-contamination. The sampler places the swab against the side of the vial to remove excessive liquid, then removes the swab from the vial and drops the vial into the biohazard waste container. Using closely spaced vertical S-strokes or Z-strokes over the entire sampling area surface, the sampler wipes the swab over the surface where the powder was originally located. The sampler then rolls the handle of the swab to rotate the swab to expose a fresh surface. The swab is wiped again over the entire area using horizontal S-strokes or Z-strokes. The sampler places the swab into the tube container by pressing firmly until a click is heard. The sampler places the tube containing the swab into a plastic bag labeled wet swab that is held open by the facilitator. Then the facilitator seals and decontaminates the bag and places it into the sample transport container allowing a contact time of 10 minutes. The facilitator then completes all necessary paperwork and ensures all hazardous waste is contained. Samples are placed in a final, sealable plastic bag, and the sampling team conducts any necessary self-decontamination according to team standard operating procedures. The sample team returns to the decontamination line, and final sample decontamination is conducted as per team standard operating procedures. Samples are then placed in a durable, hard-sided container with submission documents on the outside.